Cuando queremos dar seriedad y coherencia a un tema específico, el lenguaje, más que el idioma, el lenguaje debe ser claro y ojalá el mismo. Para ello Kenneth Knowlton nos va a hablar de herrería y vamos a ver cómo sus apreciaciones son de carácter universal cuando estamos en este tema de herrería y podología. Uh, the process to become a farrier is very different in, in all the countries around the world. Uh, I think the best program is in England, where they have to go to, they have four years of college, and then there's two years of apprenticeship, and they, they then get a li license to shoe horses. Uh, in most of the other countries, it's, uh, there's no licensing and there's no certification, so basically they, they learn from, from other farriers. Uh, the, everyone, everyone around the world has been trying to do more and more clinics in the different countries, but basically now you, you, you do clinics, uh, work mostly with another farrier for three or four years, and then, then, then start shearing on your own. Ok, primero, eh, algo importante para el herrero, eh, para, para tu, tu cuerpo aguantar más años, la altura de la bigoña. De, debería ser la altura de tu, de tu mano cerrada. Este, por ejemplo, es un poco alto para mí. To describe the, the different types of shoeing that a horse may need, depending on what discipline he's going to participate in, uh, basically, the, 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 the trimming part and the, the balance of the hoof is the same for all events. What, what changes is the type of traction a horse will need. Uh, uh, some, some horses need more traction on the front, uh, some need more on the, on the hind. And, uh, basically, if you, if you compare it to a car, the, all cars have tires and they're all the same. Uh, they're, the only thing that changes is the, the different types of traction. The horse is the same. La medida normal que usamos para un martillo es de aquí a aquí, okay? Eso para hacer menos fuerza también, porque cuando, cuando vas a golpear fuerte, mientras más largo el cabo, más fuerza hace el martillo y tú haces menos. Cuando está corto, tú tienes que hacer más fuerza. When we're talking about forging competitions uh, and the benefits of that for the, for the everyday shoeing, um, the, the, the forging competitions, I think, are, are very important for the for the farrier to learn how to make adaptions to the shoes. Uh, someone that has high forge skills can make the horses work in a, in a more efficient way. Uh, they, it's very beneficial to the horses uh, to be able to make modifications. Even if you're using machine-made shoes or factory-made shoes, you can do modifications that can ben benefit the horse very much. Yo uso el, el primero clavo como un punto de referencia, apoyar eso en la vigoña, hago fuerza para acá, enderezo de aquí para acá en el aire, ¿ok? Después giro, bueno, cuando hago eso, va a enderezar arriba, eso va a abrir un poco. Voy uno o dos golpes del primero lado para doblar eso para atrás. Voy a girar en la misma posición aquí, Este lado va a abrir más porque ahora va a estar todo recto aquí. Este lado va a abrir más, voy a tener que llevar más para abajo este lado. Okay. Uh, el secreto de esto es tratar de, de mantener la misma posición de los, de los dos lados para mantener uh, recto. The, the, basically, the way I, I, I work with uh, not only with the horse, but with the forge. I, I try to use things, uh, keep th things simple, basic, and, and very solid. And, and everything I do, I, I just try to, on the shoe and the horse, to make things symmetrical and balanced. And, and I'm always thinking about the welfare of the horse. Uh, sometimes we have to do some things because of competitions that aren't so good for the horse. Uh, if we have to do that because of uh, the, the owner's request or vet's request, we will go ahead and do that, but take it off as fast as we can. Uh, maybe leave it on a horse for one or two days and then go back to the basic, good, uh, healthy things for the horse. I think one of the, the, the issues or the, the aspects uh, most important for farriers to learn 
to be a, a good professional shoer. He has, to, he has to learn the anatomy of the horse. He has to learn how the horse works, uh, the, the, the different parts, how they relate to each other, and the, and the stress factors the stress factors on each part of the, of the horse. Uh, if, if he understands that and knows how to take pressure off uh, and, 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 and leave things balanced and, and easy for the horse to move, You'll have a horse that's more efficient. He'll be able to. He'll have a better attitude. He'll be more efficient at his as work. He'll be able to get a higher levels of competition, and most important, he'll be healthy for a longer period of time. Pues otra cosa que hablamos fue de eso, ¿qué? ¿Por qué no me gusta esto? Que como hablamos el caballo aterriza talón primero, la grande mayoría. Si, si aterriza el talón primero, un lado va a tocar antes que el otro. ¿okay? Cuando hace eso, va a torcer la articulación. Pero el caballo, cada vez que hace un paso, torce, torce la articulación y queda dolorido. Eso usa normalmente uh, para caballos que cuando están caminando, uh, torce la pata para afuera. ¿no? Es, 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 sí, eso es, es más utilizado para eso. Um, entonces la idea es, da, es dar más superficie de apoyo del lado de afuera para, para trabar. Pero si, si, si hacemos esto, si ve que eso parece que está saliendo mucho, pero si pongo esto de al lado, está casi el mismo tamaño que de ancho, nomás que eso tiene mucho más superficie. Do que ese es el superficie de apoyo, es eso a más. ¿no? Y este, tenemos toda esta distancia. Entonces tengo uh, el más apoyo y aterrizaje plana. Ahí está el lío de los rivales. Ahí está el pupilo. Vamos, vaquero. Destape, vaquero. Destape, destape. Patrocinado por el Parque Nacional de la Cultura Agropecuaria para aquí tiempo. Uh, something that's very important for the, the, the owners to understand is that the, the, when you're shoeing a horse, you're not just nailing a shoe on the horse's foot. You're actually doing, you're, you're aligning the bones, you're, you're making the muscle and the tendon structures function in a more efficient way. Uh, you can change the whole posture of the horse. Uh, a horse that's comfortable and well shod, he'll have a better attitude. Uh, if, he's, if he's shod poorly and, he, and he's sore and it hurts, it's just like us, if, we, if, we have a, if I have a rock in my shoe, I'm not gonna be thinking about uh, being nice to you. I'm gonna think about the rock in my shoe. I wanna get it out. The horse can't get it out. So he'll have a bad attitude. There, there's a lot of horses that I've seen condemned uh, as being spoiled or, or bad attitude, mean. Uh, they attack people because they, they're in pain. And, and, I, and I've seen horses that have been shot properly and changed the whole attitude and become a much better horse uh, physically and mentally. Today, um, we, we invest a lot of money in horses. Uh, they're, they're horses of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, and sometimes to, to, to not pay someone, uh, uh, I don't know what the prices are here, but not to pay someone $100 to save a few dollars on the shoeing, you can, you can make your, your horse's life 10 years shorter. So it's something that's very important. Uh, the, the, a good shoeing can make the horse especially his useful working life, a lot longer, you can more, more than double it. So uh, you should give very high importance to, the, to the, the shoeing of your horse. I, I think um, in all of Latin America, there's somewhat a lack of, of like, like they said, there's no schools, there's no formal education. They're learning from other, other ferries and from clinics, so there is a lack of uh, information. I've been coming to Colombia, I think, now for maybe four years, and I've seen an improvement in the, in the shoeing. I, I, I think it's getting better. There's, there's a long ways to go, but we, all, all over Latin America, there's a lot to learn, and uh, we just have to keep learning and trying and doing clinics and, and, and getting a level up.